Hello guys, welcome to Blender Clothes number one. Um, sorry for the delay. Um, I should have posted this video yesterday, but I had a really ca uh, case of really bad internet going on. So I decided to wait to today. Um, in any case, um, in this series of videos, I hope they will be shorter than Rigging. Uh, we will go ahead and, and search. Oh my god. Okay. I'm not sure if you can hear that, but there's a lot of people honking their horns uh, down there in the avenue next to my house. Uh, so expect some noisy. Noisy noise. Anyway. Um, to make this. Um, if you just land here in my channel and you don't know anything about Blender I suggest you to check out first 101 uh, it's a series of 8 videos uh, Text Rising which is a series of 60 videos and Rigging with 7 videos first and then come back here because you will need all 3 things to, to do clothes for metaverses ok so well What's the plan in this brand new series? Yay! Okay, first we will use um, the Avatar Workbench. Okay, uh, I think I will use the 263. It's basically the same 263, 265 in this case. It's from Machina Matrix, and I will give you the, blo uh, the link of the blog uh, on the description. Um, so, from here we will get a roof, which will be our model for a t-shirt. We'll make, in this series, we'll make a nice and simple t-shirt. Okay, we will um, create the t-shirt, we will adapt it to the, which is really easy to create a t-shirt, we will adapt it to the um, to the avatar we will uh, UV mapping, texturizing and rigging. So the first step is get the roof, the second step is create the t-shirt. Oh my god I can type today, write today. <laughs> Jesus. T-shirt, there you go. The third step is um, UV mapping and texturizing and the fourth step will be rigging it okay so why do we start with a roof why can't we start with that something else I don't know your own avatar Okay, um, first of all, I don't... Okay, thank you very much for subscribing to my channel. Yay! 87 people, I mean, come on, I can't believe it. Again, I don't know you, all your 87 beautiful people that subscribe to my channel. So, I cannot start with um, an avatar for you. And, um, if you have a female avatar, Ruth is a very good s starting point. If something fits the Ruth, it will fit your avatar. Maybe you will need to adjust things like the hips, the, the waist, the, the breast, um, all these sizes, but uh, that is a modification you can do in a really short time. <coughs> I mean, you can really uh, customize your, your whatever you make to your avatar really fast. So we will start with something in the middle. Um, if you want, and uh, leave me um, a comment in the description if you want, I can show you after we finish the t-shirt how to adapt it to an avatar with different um, proportions. Which is pretty much every single avatar but the roof that has different proportions. Anyway, going back here. 
so this is the plan. Uh, I was googling around for t-shirt, okay, and this is, I mean, I found a lot of results, I found a lot of t-shirts, and that's okay, I won't use any of these textures, uh, mainly because I didn't create this graphic, I'm not sure if they are um, licensed to, to be able to to use it in in a metaverse, much less in Second Life, where whatever you upload is theirs. So I need to check out a T-shirt mostly to see how the wrinkles on a regular T-shirt goes into an, a female avatar. Okay. Uh, because I will do a regular T-shirt. I won't do a super super tight. Okay, you don't have a ah. Here you go. I won't do something like this, which is almost a paint over the avatar. Um, if you if that's what you want, um, just do regular clothes. You don't need to do mesh, really. Why? Um, if you want something that is less conventional we will start with something like this okay it doesn't have to be white either anyway let's go to a blender and as I said before I will open the avatar workbench I don't know I will get the 260 something um, pa -pa 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 avatar workbench 263 yeah well why not there you go so other workbench 263. Maybe you will have a different out layout here because I adapted this layout for one screen only in order to um, show you better, okay, the um, the screen. Which, by the way, let's start screencast. Okay. Um, the 263, beyond the fact that has the avatar, it has the rig here, it has um, a make human old avatar, and it has all the accessories, the, the standard roof camps with, uh, which means uh, the, the skirt, the hair, the eyelashes and the eyes. By the way, in a future, I don't know when, uh, I don't know if you have any interest. This little skirt here will help us a lot uh, to make mini skirts because uh, it's already rigged, see. And um, and so adapt this, create a, a different um, shape or, or change the shape of this mesh here and create your own mini skirt using these vertices is really fast you can do it really really simple and it's already rigged right so you don't need to to drive a sort of crazy rigging a, a skirt which is more difficult than than you can imagine anyway going back to a roof yay roof so beautiful and underappreciated Okay, so what I will do first, first I will save us, guys, don't save the avatar workbench, don't ruin the file. Create a new, um, a new file called, I don't know, uh, li like I did, um, <laughs> t-shirt, whatever, okay? And while I'm here, I will just delete the rest of the things I don't need. Uh, namely the other layers uh, over here <coughs> that I won't need at all. Uh, that will mm, remove any uh, possible error and also will let me work with the with the roof without uh, further problems, especially in in my outliner. If you see, <coughs> we have in the layer 1, the roof, in the layer 9, the armature. If you press shift and click on both, 
you will have uh, the roof and the armature. <coughs> I'm sorry. If you control tab while the armature is selected, you enter in pose mode. Okay, pose mode. This is the same to, to do it from here. Object mode, pose mode. Okay, edit this tab, control tab, you change the other modes. And if you check out here, you already have in the post library the T pose and the real exit. Uh, which means that whatever rotation craziness, oops, no, craziness you can do here, you can just select the whole thing, go into armature tab in the properties window, click T pose, and click the little magnifying glass and you are back here. Alternatively, you can just go and do some craziness and just press Alt-R, Alt-R, and you will uh, return the, to the um, default position that piece of the avatar that bone. Um, what else do we have to do to set up the whole thing? Well, in my case, I will unclick this little arrow here okay on the head uh, lower body and upper body uh, which means that I cannot edit it anymore and I cannot also accidentally click on it and move it away like I did before just now uh, because I'm really clumsy sometimes and well this will help me a little bit yeah, clumsiness. Alrighty. So we're ready to. Um, uh, for now, I will hide the layer with the armature because I don't need it. And I will leave my beautiful roof here. Uh, Control S to save. I will start with a t shirt. Right. So let's go back to a reference. A t shirt. T shirt is long, goes mid hip more or less, and it has a short le uh, sleeves. Right, you could do longer leaves if you want, um, whatever, it's up to you, I mean, yeah. So, I will show you a technique that is pretty new actually, it was a better something during um, the, the pre-release of Blender 270. And right now it's it comes with Blender 270 and um, I assume it comes with other blenders uh, as well. I mean the from 270 up, right? Right now, if I'm not mistaken, we are in 271, I think. Let me check. Blender.org. Ah, oh, 270A. Okay, right. Uh, so, yeah. It will come. Uh, the, this tutorial will work for you only if you have 270 and 270A. It won't work if you have 269, for example. Why? Well, because you don't have uh, the plugin I will show you by default. Honestly, I found this plugin in a really obscure video uh, on YouTube that I will leave you the link on the description too because it's awesome it's made with the guy that it's made uh, um, the guy that create that plugin made it and it shows a really easy way to create a t-shirt or a, a simple dress and adapt it to your, your avatar really really easy Right. So, what's the um, the options we have here to do a T-shirt? Well, you have several options, right? And hey, it's all about options. That's awesome. You could, I don't know, add a curve, for example, a circle, and move it up right here, make it smaller, enter in edit mode, and start to more or less um, give uh, some shape on it right and once you have it done at least the basics start to extrude did I add oh okay my
my bad. Surface. Circle. There we go. Now we are talking. Um, accidentally I added a curve circle. A curve circle won't extrude when you ups um, when extrude the control points. So it won't be useful for us in our case. Okay, um, so so oops. sorry for that. Okay, as I told you, uh, you can go ahead and more or less model the thing, uh, extrude. Ah, there you go. See, um, I don't know. Start to to more or less create the shape around the roof and work your way up. Okay and do the same for the sleeves and then convert it with um, alt c to mesh and once it's a mesh um, stitch the vertices of the sleeves and the, the top part i have done this before it's not that difficult it's a pain but uh, you will survive however i won't show you this way today I will show you something better. We'll start with a really, really 2D um, object. Okay, I will start with a mesh plane. Mesh plane. It's not a curve, it's not a nerve, it's nothing. It's just mesh. Okay, entering edit mode, uh, rotating in Y 90 degrees, so I have it facing to me. <coughs> and move it forward a little bit yay there you go you can go home now <laughs> no of course not you won't ever go home <laughs> so yeah the lower part of our me of our t-shirt should go more or less like these right a little bit more wide What's my intention here? Well, my intention here is to create a really, really um, basic t-shirt shape in 2D, okay? Um, create the other um, part, the, the back part, in 2D, but we'd be, we'd be, will be basically uh, a copy of this one. Uh, stitch it with, with uh, edges all, or, all around it and then use a cloth simulation. What's a cloth simulation? Well, a cloth simulation is a physics that Blender can calculate and simulate, and we will make those edges to act like rubber bands that will pull the vertices all around our, our roof, okay? And it will more or less adapt the basic shape. We will need to work on that later. But at first, we will adapt the basic shape to our to our avatar really fast, right? So that's why I'm doing something so 2D. Okay, you will see. So, yeah, extrude, extrude. I'm not doing a lot of subdivisions yet right because i'm trying to create the basic shape here and also since this will go around the avatar i will need to calculate not only the uh, the visible part of my roof i mean uh, of the front of the roof but also the side i will need to add on this slice half of the size size of my roof and on the back slice, half of the size, especially on the butt and, and the back, and uh, here on the breasts, because I will need that. Imagine you're cutting a piece of fabric to make your T-shirt. You will need more fabric around the hips and around the breasts than you need around the waist. So waist, waist, waist. So yeah, add some fabric okay don't be shy we will adjust this later but for now something like that will work and um, let's do something over here <coughs> and let's go a little bit down 
here extrude also more or less like this I will make it a little bit like this I will extrude again until here I will create the, the neck later and that will give us more or less the amount of vertices we need to make create the contour now I will subdivide vertically because this is really ro low res and won't work so what I will go do is do control R which is a loop cut and move my my mouse wheel up to create more cuts around uh, and I think that that's good okay so how it works well it's really simple just control R um, set your oh, hover your mouse over whatever seam you want to subdivide in my case the middle um, move up the, the little wheel mouse while well, mouse wheel to add subdivisions in that case seven cuts then click the mouse if you click and still move the mouse you can choose where the cut should go okay in my case to ensure that that the cut is symmetrical in the middle I will now right click my mouse that cancels the movement and sets the cuts in the middle okay in the middle of whatever geometry you have uh, if it's not a, a symmetrical geometry the middle can be I don't know in another place right um, let's go ahead and create the neck about the neck and t-shirt for girls well you probably will know better than me how to do it because there's so many models oh my god I mean round neck v-neck um, more pronounced less pronounced whatever I'm just trying to give some space here I will stitch my my t-shirt only on these two so I I'm making just the space to to do a round and common neck for the t-shirt also I will make some subdivisions here I think three is enough here two is enough here two here to why do I do horizontal subdivisions well because if you move your avatar you want this to move more or less proportionally with the avatar you don't want to to have your t-shirt as if it were a solid armor from Iron Man right so you need to <laughs> you need to move um, add some subdivisions sadly the good news is uh, with this system you have a really tight control on how much you want uh, the t-shirt to move or not and how uh, um, detailed you want the t-shirt to um, how much detail on the geometry of the t-shirt you will have okay so yeah so now I will do the little um, sleeve here I could do two things here I could just select these vertices these vertices over here and extrude okay Ex press E enter and then just resize on Y right well I won't do that instead I will just delete the half delete for vertices <coughs> and I will exit edit mode I will add a modifier called mirror we have done that in 101 mirror in Y so from now on I will do half of my t-shirt and the other half will be mirrored which is awesome at this stage of this 
uh, of this stage of, of the of the construction of our t-shirt. I will extrude these in Y and you know what I will also start to resize it in Y so I will start to straighten up the the t-shirt. And I will add more vertices around the um, shoulder because we will need them later to rig and, and make a good rig here, right? Uh, remember, on rigging, we will uh, we use it a, a pre-made um, mesh that didn't have a lot of vertices around the joints and that's not good for us okay so we will add up some more vertices here sy0 and now i have it completely straight and i will move it a little bit more there we go okay more or less like this i'm adding this last one to fold it inside actually I will do the same here I will add a tiny one here because then I will fold it inside and I will have some sort of illusion that the t-shirt is actually um, have some width some some volume real volume otherwise if you don't do that, and and maybe uh, I will show you later. I will show you later. It will be more uh, obvious. But <coughs> let me search shading back case calling. This is way better because that way you know which part of the, your mesh is visible and which part is invisible. Okay. Um, otherwise, if you see around for example the inside the sleeve of the of the the inside of the sli uh, um, the, the, the inside part of the sleeve or the inside part uh, of the, the seam on the bottom you will see it's transparent okay it, it will break the illusion that it's a solid object so i will add a little a little flap there to to move it inside and and preserve the illusion that's that's a really real object with with some volume in it and I will do the same here actually um, go with the edge mode I will extrude a tiny little flap here I will use it later or maybe not maybe later why maybe later? Well, because this part is particularly problematic because it will get stitched all around, and also the the arm will will wrap around the arm and the neck at the same time. So this part in particular is not very um, it's not a very good idea to get go super complex at this point around the neck right now. Later we we will. We will use that. We will do it. Do it. Oh my God! I'm so um, I'm not very fluid in English today. I'm sorry for that. Maybe it's because I'm I'm still. It's very early in the morning, and I'm not entirely awoke yet. So do this and narrate it it's a little bit of a of a challenge for me I'm sorry for that guys <coughs> anyways check this out <coughs> I have a, a generous space around the, my avatar except maybe in the joint that um, goes between the arm and the torso so I needed to add some space there because it will wrap around and if you check the uh, this joint it has a lot of volume to cover a lot of surface to cover okay so think in a fabric you are making for um, 
for creating the t-shirt and that's an, a good analog actually to what we are doing here so I needed to add some more space here to wrap around and the same happens up here Oops. I need some space <coughs> and I'm using it the uh, using the proportional edit mode in connected only mode so I have a better control on, on how it's um, how can I unwrap the uh, I'm sorry how can I um, move this around for my model I think that we are done here and as you see it's really fast okay it's not something laborious at all so this will be the front part I will shift D and duplicate and move it backwards okay there we go this is the back part of course the back part has the normals flipped so I have to um, go um, press T to get the, the transfer window here and flip the normals enter net mode select the whole thing shading UV tab um, flip direction there you go see nice right well now what else okay we have the basic setup here I will mm, apply my modifiers in this case the mirror in both slides right and also I will join both I will select one click shift the other one control J control J and I created one single mesh of both sides okay this is vital I need that to be one single object at least per garment right what else okay now since I need to uh, and let me show you I need to go vertex by vertex like this and create an edge right if I select more than two vertices three or four I will create a face and I don't need this I need just an edge so I need to go vertex by vertex one another very good reason to keep it really really low res at first right and I have to do all around whatever I want to be stitched together so that means that I have to do two identical sides and guess what I want because I'm lazy I'm extremely lazy <laughs> so to promote my laziness I will again select both sides okay that's why I enter in wireframe mode I select the, the half of both sides I will delete the vertices which leave me with half a t-shirt again exit edit mode add modifier mirror on Y there I go so yeah that that way I will save myself to do the whole thing I will do just half of it laziness is a good thing to have when you're working with blender because it forces you to investigate how can you do the less possible also that's a, um, a good way to be professional and that may sound stupid but think about this as I told you before professionally it's really recommended for you to be fast okay even if the result is not perfect if it's fast enough um, will be more desirable than a perfect result that takes years to make okay of course the combination of both is the ideal but you don't always have the time generally you don't have the time period so search a new technique to make it faster it's a good thing for you to do 
when you uh, have a lot of time in your hands. And again, I don't know if there's a way to select all the border and create all the edge in all the edges in one single operation. Oh, no, um, if I select a lot of vertices and press F, which is what I'm doing here, I will create a lot of faces, and I don't want that, right? So, in any way, if you keep it low res, as you see, I just did it while blabbing to you, and that's not a bad thing. So, this is our final result. I will apply the mirror, select the whole thing, and remove doubles just in case. Remove doubles. And I said remove doubles and not bubbles, right? Remove doubles. Eight vertices. So I had some duplicate. Oh, wait a second. Let me see. Oh, no. Okay. I had some double vertices somewhere. A couple on, on each. Um, a couple of, of on, on this side. And that went by four because I have mirrored the, the geometry and duplicated the geometry on the background, so, yeah. Anyway, <coughs> this is our basic setup for our t-shirt. So far, not impressive, right? So, save. Oh my god, save. What's next? Well, now I think you have a better idea of what are we about to do here. We will use a clothes simulation to move all this front part and back part around a roof. Okay, I make it more next to the to the to the avatar. Um, how? Well, using these edges we have here as springs. Okay as rubber bands that will pull each one of these vertices that are attached to together and we will use the avatar as a collision field a collision field is um, uh, which basically it means it's a fancy way to say we will make these uh, two slices of 2D t-shirt to wrap around the, the avatar, okay? And to do that, we needed to calculate and create a cloth simulation, okay? A cloth simulation is just that. Blender will calculate how to create, um, how to displace those vertices around the avatar, and it will take in consideration some forces like gravity, like wind, whatever you want. We will do, however, a very basic um, a very basic physics here for two reasons. One, because I don't want to kill you <laughs> and the second is because if the, the more complicated the physics it gets, the more slow Blender calculates things right so yeah don't don't go crazy so what's the first step to do that well to do that if we go ahead and, and create the, the, the let me select the whole thing there we go if I create the simulation right now let me show you actually I will go to this new tab we never used before which is physics right and having my t-shirt selected I will choose clothes right and from clothes you will have the presets first I'll say it's denim you may say no it's cotton and, and the t-shirt should be more soft and okay wait let me go with denim there's a reason for that I don't need uh, this to be uber wrinkly right because the wrinkles I will do it later not now and how do I calculate this okay go to cloth cache here 
the, the second section of the tab and just press bake right right now it's doing the calculation and you don't see anything yes it's boring I know and it's 250 um, frames that is calculating right now and while we have this little number there we have just okay it, it made less than 250 why well because most probably that's all the 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 amount of frames it needed to calculate the simulation of this t-shirt okay uh, from that frame on it will be the same so it didn't calculate it if we go to our timeline as you see nothing happened it just fall down it didn't wrap around the avatar it didn't use the the edges of springs it didn't do anything actually it's a blech. okay so that won't do <laughs> obviously it won't do <coughs> so what's next what can I do to, to make it work actually well first of all free bake if you bake it and, and you want to keep working on it you have everything gray out now free bake free bake allows you to keep working on this so yeah what's next well as I said I need to make these edges as springs right as rubber bands to pull the vertices around and we have here cloth sewing springs go down here enable it <coughs> and make some force here which means the power these edges has to pull the vertices they are connected to if you have it in zero they won't pull the vertices at all right so in force one right minimum zero maximum one for now use that so what now well calculate again once you have the, the cache done you can just press play here and calculate in real time but we have the same problem see it just fall down if I go and bake all dynamics yeah it will do it and we will have exactly the same problem it will just fall down without anything else why well because we forgot something here we forgot to add a collision on the avatar see we and go down however this time and this is where you can start to have an orgasm if you want the um, edges are pulling my t-shirt it's not calculating the collision against the avatar so it's falling down falling down falling down falling down but on frame 34 it's sued up and uh, we didn't do anything actually here also I'm realizing that I have the normal turns or turn around but well we'll correct this soon uh, right cloth swing spring free bake how do I add the collision on against the avatar well go to piece by piece oh okay I forgot to enable the edit on on these three parts go on the head for example and again on the tab physics add collision for now leave it like that collision here arc collision and collision here there you go <coughs> yay we're done let's bake I can press play here actually no I can't I don't know when I can press play and when I can't I don't quite get it as you see it's taking more time now it's making it slower why 
Well, because it's calculating the collisions against the roof. Okay, so it's a new force that has to have in consideration to move the vertices around. Meanwhile, I will keep drinking my mate. Mate, uh, uh, you can write mate in English like mate, but instead of mate as in partner or friend, mate is, a, is an infusion, like coffee or tea, right? And there you go. Whee! Whoa! What happened now? <laughs> well, this is what happened. Yeah. The springs are starting to pull the vertices together. But meanwhile, the gravity are making our, our t-shirt fall down. And when it starts to collide against the avatar, like the case of the legs, for example, it makes slide away <laughs> and go like a piece of, I don't know, <laughs> around the, the avatar, yes? So, yeah, how can we avoid that problem? <laughs> well, free bake. I go down here to cloth filled weights. And I have here a lot of, of forces that are affecting our simulation. Uh, the principle, the, the, the main one, is gravity. Okay, I will make the gravity li really sl low so it won't pull that fast my t-shirt down and uh, it will allow to spring around my avatar without uh, sliding off like that <laughs> and I will go again there you go real time as you see it, it is doing it. I'm doing it in real time. My frame per second of physics calculation appears here. Uh, but it's falling down too fast yet. And uh, it's, it's going through the arms first. So that won't do. Stop. <coughs> so how can I avoid that? Well, you can add swing force. For example, I would add swing force in five. Uh, that will make the, the, the pull of my edges really powerful now. So I don't think I can do this. Oh yes, I can. There we go. This is a first approximation. We are not using this technique to make it complete. Uh, the, to finish our, our, our t-shirt around the, the avatar okay we won't do that um, mainly because first of all it has some errors and we will deal with that now and second of all because we will need to add some details later as you see it almost worked but now it's slide off again and yeah that won't do so stop the simulation going back I will leave my swing force in 5, I will reduce my gravity to 0 0.05 and we have a lot of issues here. Let's go to collision. First of all, the collision as it is right now won't do. And let me show you how, why. Well now I have less gravity, uh, the t-shirt the is holding in place. but check this out the collision between the the t-shirt and the, the avatar is leaving a huge space it's like I don't know some sort of, of um, inflated um, shirt you know because yeah it's colliding against the avatar but it's doing it in a way that leaves a lot of space between the cloth and the avatar and that's not very realistic at all <coughs> However, that's a good approximation. So I will reset the simulation, going back. And I will play with the distance here, the co collision. 
uh, the distance of the collision, 0, 0, 1, the minimum possible, right? Again, we have more things to touch here. Um, I will change the outer and the inner. The outer will go 0, 0, 1, 2, oops. There we go, and the inner will go 0, 0, 5. And that's the value I found as um, desirable in this case, right? Because it really creates a close collision against my avatar pieces. Going back here. Again, what just did I do? I go to close collision added, uh, uh, make the, the, the distance really, really tiny <coughs> and then click on my three parts of the avatar and always on the physics um, tab I reduce as much as possible the outer and inner collision. You can do this number the same, you can do 001 and 0012 however if you do that uh, it will break everything, so don't. <laughs> I don't know, make 0, 010 for example and 0, 0, 002 if you want, but don't do the same number here. Um, yeah, and also I will add a self collision. The distance, the least possible, which is 0 0.5 in this case. Right? Again, bake, bake all dynamics in fact. Go ahead and have fun. Uh, <coughs> as you see, the more I add, the more collisions I add, the more um, forces I tweak, the slower it is. Okay, we just did 10 frames when before we did, I don't know how many, in the same time. And this will go lower and lower. The best way to lag to death is add quality in these collisions and we may need to do that yes the quality means more calculation on how the clothes collides against your avatar however this is great actually this is awesome and um, and do does an awesome job and, and create a very realistic um, renders However, we don't need it to render. We we need to just create a first step to create our T-shirt around that avatar, and then um, keep working without this physics on, right? So yeah. Uh, have you heard the long story of my life? Because, you know, we, don't, we do have time, we do have time for years and years of my life ex explain it in detail, you know, in ex excruciating detail. Um, I hope I could show you a better way to do this, or a faster way. I don't have a faster way to do this. However, let me tell you some things. First, if you do this and you plan to store this and, and resume tomorrow, for example, um, and you save Blender and close this, you will lose the cache and you will have to do this calculation again. Enable this cache in that case. If you do it that way, if you enable this cache, this calculation will go in your hard drive and that way you won't lose this calculation right now. However, uh, unless you have a really low computer, a uh, really slow computer, I don't recommend that. I really don't. And again, we are calculating really a really low poly model, right? We don't have a lot of vertices around. And the avatar, the roof itself, don't have a lot of vertices around. Um, Please don't go crazy subdividing or, or doing 
crazy stuff like that now at this point because you will have a hell of a time waiting for this to happen okay um, and of course you can stop the calculation at any time pressing escape and that's exactly what I will do here when the frame reach 80 why? well because 80 frames will be enough for me there you go to know if this worked or not there you go okay so it worked enough we have some problems though First of all, I need more spay, more geometry under the arms, as you see, and less geometry here, because it didn't um, gave me uh, the amount of, of space I wanted for the boobs, and uh, maybe we need uh, more, uh, I mean, less uh, geometry around the waist because it's huge for this poor roof so yeah let's do that modification I will free the bake I will enter night mode select this and make it less wide actually I will do the same oops nope with both sides there we go less here and I will adjust a little bit here too at this point is pretty much the same than than real life if you ever have done this in real life okay I really admire you all right <coughs> I will calculate again. This time I will press just play and see what happens. Sometimes it it, um, it works, sometimes it doesn't. The first frames will pull the, the vertices with so much force, everything will wrinkle around, right? And uh, it will take some time until these sleeves uh, go up the avatar um, stop colliding with the avatar itself and um, and have some meaningful result but for now we we can have a pretty good preview on, on what hap what's happening here um, as you see we need more we need why it's taking so long to rotate well because it's showing the whole thing at 0 0.85 frames per second so it's quite laggy when I just move it around and rotate while it's calculating at the same time pressing bake will make the simulation faster because it doesn't have to show it to you at the same time however um, yeah uh, it's more boring that way for you and I want to show you in the meantime about what's going on here so uh, I have two problems here the first one is that I have a lamp here see that we can model later and make it less lumpy and the swing is uh, the, the springs which are the edges are so strong right now that it pulls the geometry inside the avatar and um, that breaks the calculation a little bit so what I will do here is press see it, it's, it goes all shaky because it doesn't know what to do with the, the geometry inside the avatar and that's the problem when you set up numbers too tiny on collision and and the collision uh, f field of the, the avatar itself okay uh, it's very prone to 
make the geometry go inside the the geometry, the 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 T-shirt in go inside the avatar, and get stuck there. So what I will do here is reduce the force of my sewing in, into one, which means that these edges here will be less powerful. Okay, it will take more time and having in consideration to have a little low gravity it's okay it won't, uh, the t-shirt the won't fall so fast than that um, will break the shirt see it's it's crawling up now using the force of the springs slowly but surely it closed on the shoulders without so much problems. However, we have two problems here. First of all, the the whole thing is kind of rotated. I mean, we have a lot of, of, of neck going down here and around here we have the neck touching the the neck of the t-shirt touching the neck of the avatar, right? Also, we have some problems here, and uh, we have a lump of skin here. So we have some things to some things to correct, and I will show you how next class because we run out of time. However, there are more techniques to make this adjustment a little less clumsy and we will go ahead and check out what can we do now next class however that being said oh I delete the cache silly me okay that being said I will add more swing force here and back again Oh yeah, bake in edit mode. Yeah, that will work so good. Um, next class, we will keep refining the shape of our t-shirt, refining the physics around it, which won't take us much longer. And then we will set up um, the shape, well I mean we will set the shape we want and once set up we will forget about physics and keep working on the mesh itself um, also I will show you how to make a copy of this t-shirt um, subdivide it until it has a lot of vertices, I mean a lot and use that super dense geometry to create the shadows, realistic shadows we will use as ambient occlusion map for this t-shirt and do some realistic and, and seamless uh, shadows over the fabric of the t-shirt of the low res version okay we will use a high res version to create a uh, realistic way to hang on the avatar and, and on the wrinkles and the shadows it has but on the low res which is the one we are seeing now why? well because if you upload something to high res you will have problems maybe you want, you want you personally want the wearer of the t-shirt want however whoever is around has to load suddenly a lot of data from your t-shirt and uh, believe me I, I have a friend that has a whole avatar made of mesh and it's a beautiful avatar it's very well done but the mesh is so dense and it has so much textures that when you see that person pop in somewhere most probably your viewer will crash <laughs> so this person enters in a place and crash 
50% of the people that's around. It's simple because the viewer can handle that amount of data so suddenly. So yeah, keep things low res, keep things without tons and tons of geometry. It will look good, uh, it will give you a, a, a more realistic view for sure, uh, but Metaverse is uh, OS Grid and, and Second Life are not prepared for that kind of geometry. The viewers are not prepared for that kind of geometry. So please keep your things low res. Don't go crazy. And I will show you the way to have a beautiful shading over your t-shirt and uh, without the need to have a trillion vertices around and crashing everywhere around just because they you want uh, more realism on a t-shirt that nobody will inspect that close okay so yeah links on the description you will need the avatar work engine you will need um, oh nothing else the rest well we are doing it <laughs> and check this out with my last blah blah I have almost the simulation done. 99 and 100. That will stop. Yeah, there you go. So for now we have this. And we will keep refining it. And as you see, as, as the simulation goes, this section will get into the skin. And we will do something to stop that right I would say that around here is a good way to stop our simulation and start to working directly on mesh without the need to keep simulating the avatar so before we go and one last thing what happens if I have my t-shirt well more or less done here and I decide, okay, you know what, I, instead of waiting a lot of time doing more simulations and playing with numbers I don't understand, what if I want to just stop here, freeze these in this state and continue uh, on mesh directly, continue moving vertices and all that jazz? Well, that's very simple actually. Go to the modifier section, okay? and apply. When you apply the cloth simulation, when you apply the cloth modifier, what you have done is freeze the mesh as it is right now. Okay? And that's what we have here. So now I could, for example, let me hide the avatar. For example, I could go ahead and delete one side of my mesh t-shirt, add a mirror on Y, uh, increase the edge limit to stitch the, the whole thing. Yeah, more or less like that. I will stitch the rest by hand and apply it. There you go. I will stitch this part by hand because it didn't stitch uh, having it so far away. So don't worry about that. Uh, why did I do that? Well, because the, this side is was better than this side. So I decide <laughs> to make it more conforming that way. Uh, okay, I will save this in this state right now, and we will keep going next week with uh, the refine of this shape and the um, UV texturing, rigging, and blah blah blah. Have a nice week, guys, and see you next Friday.